Well, fans, the time has come for the featured bout you've all been waiting for, the WBC Featherweight Championship of the World. Please welcome the boxers as they make their way to the ring. First joining us, we have the challenger, fighting out of Los Angeles by way of Mongolia, the undefeated WBC number one contender, King Tug Tugstod Nyambayar. Mongolian, the 27-year-old Tukstot King Tug Nyambayar. Many of the three million citizens in Mongolia will be watching this fight tonight. And many Mongolians in attendance here tonight. Many Mongolian flags. And in fact, as you look around the PPL Center, this isn't exactly hostile territory for Nyambayar, who won an Olympic silver medal in 2012, was a bit of a youth sensation. And most recently, he won his first 12-round decision by defeating former titleist Claudio Marrero in January of last year. The only other lefty Nyambayar has faced. Hey, there's always talk of Russell's inactivity, but Nyambayar is coming off a 13-month layoff, the longest of his career. Russell's layoff, nine months. Yeah, he literally waited. They won the Eliminator, and he waited on Gary Russell's timetable, saying, I'm not going to risk a fight. I'm going to wait. I'm going to keep myself in shape and be ready for this fight. And as you pointed out, he's got a home crowd advantage. Yeah, I, I didn't know Allentown was in Mongolia. Who knew? <laughs> And now making his way to the ring, representing our nation's capital, the longtime WBC featherweight champion of the world, Mr. Gary Russell Jr. We're all getting ready for the sequel to Coming to America. Gary Russell Jr. may be providing a little insight. And hey, we only see him once a year. Might as well put on a show as he gets ready to go here for the past five years. Russell has made this walk as many times as the bearded dude has taken a reindeer-led sleigh ride around the globe. And both of them come bearing gifts that are wrapped. In Russell's case, it's his hands long considered the fastest in the sport. We'll take a look at the keys, or excuse me, at the uh, tail of the tape. And uh, there is a height and reach advantage for Nyambayar. And it, the interesting thing is he may use it and he may not. We have seen him in some of his fights stay on the outside, but he says he wants to crowd Russell. We'll see which it is. And the rules for tonight's main event, no standing eight count. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental foul or headbutt causes a fight to end within four rounds, it's a no decision. After four rounds, they go to the scorecards for a technical decision. Here once again, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr.
Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the BPL Center in Allentown, Pennsylvania, as Premier Boxing Champions presents the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by TGB Promotions in association with King's Promotions and Showtime. Sponsored by MGM Resorts and Brooklyn Boxing, this bout is sanctioned by the WBC. The president, Mauricio Suleiman, the supervisor, is Michael George. Along with the Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission, Chairman is Rudy Battle, Executive Director Greg Serb. Introducing our three judges scoring this bout from Brinkside from Alberta, Canada, David Biloser Kowick. From Connecticut, Glenn Feldman. And from New York, John McKay. We introduce our third man to the ring, the referee in charge of the action, Gary Rosato. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Featherweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Allentown, Pennsylvania, Introducing to you first, the challenger on my right, fighting out of the red corner. Entering the ring, wearing black trunks with gold trim, fighting out of Los Angeles by way of Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. He weighed in at 125 and three quarter pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign, the professional ranks, with a record of 11 wins, no losses, nine wins coming by way of knockout tonight, making his first attempt at a world title. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the 2012 Olympic silver medalist and the undefeated WBC number one ranked featherweight contender known as King Tug, introducing the ring, the defending world champion, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing gray trunks with black trim from Capitol Heights, Maryland, representing Washington, D.C. He weighed in at a trimmed ready 125 pounds. His fine record stands at 30 wins, one loss, with 18 wins coming by way of knockout tonight. He is making the fifth defense of his title. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the renowned, reigning, and defending WBC featherweight champion of the world, introducing Mr. Gary Russell Once again, our referee in charge, now to give instructions, Gary Rosato. Let's go. Mouthpiece. Put it. Okay. okay, gentlemen, I gave you specific detailed instructions in the locker room. I'm already going to tell you two things. Protect yourselves at all times, and most importantly, obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves, bang at the bell. God bless. Maybe the first boxing event at the PPL Center in Allentown, Pennsylvania, but this crowd loud and proud, a fitting atmosphere for a championship fight. Referee Gary Rosado, 23 years of pro experience, his 851st pro bout. This is just Nyan Bayar's 12th professional bout. And for Gary Russell Jr., well, he wants to successfully defend his 126-pound crown for the fifth time and then go on to bigger fish, as he puts it. But what an atmosphere to kick things off. And hey, all I can say is Mongolia represent. <laughs> as Russell is in the gray fur with black, Nyambayar is in the black with gold. Mongolia travels well. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see as Nyambayar starts to get a a sense of the speed of Russell if he feels he can handle it or if he tries to make try to make an attempt on any of the timing. It's gonna probably take him a round or two to even get the gist of it. 
because that's how fast Russell is. Yeah, Russell coming out with purpose here. You know, he's throwing some good shots. Russell throws about 72 punches per round. Nyambiar only throws about oh, 50. Russell he's, he just may landed to, a left. He may have to up the total in this if he's going to win these rounds from Russell. Only title is born in Mongolia has been Lakva Sim, the 130 and 135 pound titleist in 99 and 04. Twice Sim lost the title in his first defense. Like Sim, Nyambiar was born in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, which is, of course, the capital. And I think many of those three million people in Mongolia made the trek to yeah. Allentown. You know, uh, Nyambiar is fighting short. He's not fighting tall. He, he, and so, if you're going to do that, you had better come in and engage, if you can, get past that hand speed. Russell almost universally ranked second at 126 behind the unbeaten Josh Warrington of the United Kingdom, who holds a win over Carl Frampton. Warrington's had a terrific couple of years. Minute and a half gone in the opening round. Gary Russell has a terrific right hook. Not all lefties do. He scored nine knockdowns with that right hook. So it's a weapon that Nyambayar, who's been knocked down with the right hand, has to be aware of. Nyambayar saying that he's more of a pressure fighter, but that he can adapt his style. Depends on his opponent while he is facing one of the best. And as we talk about Russell's blinding hand speed. We know Nyambayar has talked about his impeccable timing, and it will have to be perfect There's one thing to keep in mind Russell. here. Nyambayar is not giving ground on anything Russell is doing. It's it's not it's not that he's, it's not that Russell is not gonna land his shot, but it's gonna put some mental pressure on Russell. Oh, Russell stumbled, and referee, Gary Rosado rules it a slip. A and that's you gotta be careful with a lefty versus righty. Yep. A lot of officials do not check for that. Lefty versus righty, you always have to be careful for the feet tangling and causing trip ups. And uh, there was a right hand in there. It didn't create the knockdown, but Nyambiar has a very good that's right hand. That's his, made, his big power punch. And Russell, in his 32nd professional fight, has never been knocked down. Nyambiar has twice been knocked down against Osir Escandon, their common opponent. Russell stopped him in seven, Nyambayar stopped him in three. We'll first take a quick peek at how that uh, fall happened to the mat. They get their legs tangled up, and there you see it. As Paulie points out, lefty-righty, that happens often. Now well, let's take a look at the keys to victory for Gary Russell, Jr. Create doubt early, you want to make Nyambayar feel like he doesn't belong in there with you and that you're on another level. Combination punching, very important for him. We haven't seen it yet, but he's got great hand speed. And I mentioned the right hook, those nine knockdowns that he's created. He'd like to create one tonight with that punch. As for Nyambayar, he needs to not create lulls. He needs to go for it with Russell and up his punch count. He has a very good uppercut, and there were spots in round one where he might have been able to throw it. The double left hook, very important for him because you can do that against a lefty, and he has a good one. The bell in round two, we mentioned that Nyambayar has been down twice in his career, of course, came back to win both of those fights since he's 11-0 coming into this fight. A Hall of Famer, Felix Trinidad, notorious for getting knocked out and going on to win the fight. The knockdown serving as an alarm clock. And there's that hand speed, the triple pump of the jab by Russell. And again, what I'm, what I was trying to get to before the slip, good left oh, hands there by Russell. Double left hands by Russell. Even if Russell's landing, I'm not giving up a lot of ground. So what he's trying to do is break Russell mentally. Let's we'll see if how Russell handles this kind of pressure as the fight wears on. Right now, obviously with full energy, he's landing some sharp shots. And I am by our not being discouraged. You know, Russell, of course, their nickname manual, Groundhog Gary, all of the, the wisecracks that have been made. Here's a guy who, when you ask him about his legacy, he says his legacy is his family. Proud father of six kids, and he's done very well for himself doing it his way. And, and this guy's been a prodigy. I mean, at the age of four, you guys, he was shadow boxing for money with local DC stars like Keith Holmes, William Joppy, and Sharpay Mitchell. <laughs> There's a nice right hand by Nyan Barr, and, and you know, when he gets the range on that punch, we're going to find out how well Russell takes it. He's bound to land one or two somewhere along the line here. Well, 
right minute now, and a half gone in round two. Go ahead, Pauly. Now, right now, Russell also not has has not put all the full weight on his shots either. He's just trying. He's shooting just enough to land some shots right. and touch. Nayam Bayar hasn't discouraged, but it is the sharpshooting is probably winning the rounds for Russell. And you know, people always wonder when will rust become a factor for Gary Russell Jr. Who, will, let's face it, Jim Matt stays in the gym year round, working with his father and his brothers. And and you look back throughout the sports history, guys like Bernard Hopkins, Vitaly Klitschko, and others who have successfully returned from long layoffs. No longer a universal truth, is it, Al? That a no. long layoff guarantees ring rust. It, on it, it isn't, and that started with Floyd Mayweather. Of course, is a special athlete who was able to do that, and he and Russell have, have both done that. Uh, and we mentioned Nyambar himself coming in off a long layoff. Longer layoff than Russell. Yeah. But of course, as we mentioned, Nyambar after beating Claudio Marrero, waiting for his opportunity to vie for this championship. He is the mandatory. And Russell says, hey, I'll wait for my mandatories unless they're the big names. He's talked about wanting to face Leo Santa Cruz, Javante Davis. But right now, many people feel that Nayan Bayar will prove to be the toughest tense since Russell's lone loss to Vasily Lomachenko. Of course, Joseph Diaz also acquitted himself well in the loss to Russell. And we saw Jojo Diaz win a 130-pound belt last week. Well. It has been a long day for Gary Russell Jr. Came here early at 3.39 in the afternoon. And why? Because his brothers were fighting and he even rehearsed the ring walk that we saw uh, executed. So he wanted to make sure that was flawless. Coming to Allentown. Exactly. And then was in the corner as his brothers uh, fought. That's his dad down there, of course. And uh, hey, once Jim again was Jim. headed out for his next brother at 6.26 p.m. And that would net another victory for the Russell work. family. And then you know what? There was time for some chess with another brother. Uh, and he came up victorious when he hopes to happen tonight. And that dovetails nicely to the fact that Gary Russell Jr. said that this game would be, this fight would be a game of high speed chess. So we will see if that plays out as we are through two rounds scheduled for 12 for Russell's 126 pound title. This is round number three. Gary Russell Jr. averages 36 jabs around. He doesn't land a lot, but uses that punch very much as a rain finder. And he has thrown over 80 jabs already in this in this fight. So it's a part of him setting up his left hand and getting beginning his combinations. And Nyambar trying to parry the jab and fire off a right of his own as Russell flashing the lightning quick jabs. Nyambar. Holding his positioning and, and, and looking for an error from Russell, maybe reaching in or something. But the, the problem that Amber has is Russell also has a great sense of positioning. So even when he throws his shots, his balance never really betrays him. And uh, Nyambayar turned professional in 2015 at 122 pounds, 11 0 with nine knockouts. But it's Gary Russell establishing the jab here in round number three. Fires off a left hand. Nyambar hasn't gotten in close enough. I mentioned the double left hook. He is capable of that, but you have to be in a position to throw that wow, punch. Triple jab. And he hasn't gotten there. And that's the thing that Russell's doing with that jab. But even if it's not always landing, it, just showing it out there and with, with solid balance behind you, Nyambar has to know it can be followed by a left hand or a right hook, so he can't really react to it. And you talk about Gary Russell Jr.'s power, highlight one-punch KOs. Herberto Ruiz, Roberto Castaneda, I mean, when he has pop out. He does, you know, he had hand problems earlier in his, yes, career, his career, but those have abated, and, uh, and he's been... Well, and it helps when you only fight once a year, your hands tend no, to stay true. healthy. That's absolutely true. Oh, there's a shot that lands on the jaw of Nyan Bayar. Kind of a half hook, half jab by Russell. Nyan Bayar cutting the ring off right away. He's trying to stay in Russell's head. See the sense of position. They're fighting at a close distance, even if not a lot is happening. And he's trying to put that mental pressure. Russell goes downstairs with the jab. Nyan Bayar, high guard. Holding his ground, as Paulie has mentioned, and trying to find a way to 
That's Solve the, the riddle of Gary Russell. The, the thing about the mental pressure is it's designed to try to get your opponent, who may have the advantages, to panic and maybe make some errors. The problem with Russell is I don't think you're going to get him to panic unless you can start hitting him with some clean shots. Yeah, he's very self-confident in there. Nyambay are momentarily bothering Russell, and Russell coming back fast and again pumps up that double jab. Finals, 10 seconds of the third round, and yes, this chess match continues to unfold in the ring as Diane Bayar had Russell in the corner. We talked about the fact that Russell is very adept with the right hand and pumps out the jab, and then there's kind of that half jab, half hook that landed after Nyambar tried his own left hook. And later on here again is the right hook of, of Russell. And it's a punch that, you know, has been good for him over the years. Control to the speed. When you get comfortable enough, you can start throwing three punches. But you gotta start touching the inside too, okay? You gotta know the habit. He squats. He squats. When he squats. Good man. You're doing good. Only keep moving, keep pressure. Okay? Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Your job is very important, attack. Jab, double jab. Let's go, coach. Okay. Let's go, coach. Let's go. This is round number four, scheduled for 12 for Gary Russell Jr.'s 126-pound title. Nyambayar fell in love with the sport of boxing when he was just five years of age. Used to, uh, well... Hit the heavy bag with his grandfather, idolized Manny Pacquiao on his come up, had 150 amateur fights and Olympic silver medalist, and now here tonight, the biggest opportunity of his burgeoning career. And obviously, you know, the, the hand speed has been the difference in this fight, as it often is with Russell and, and some of his, and his opponents. Faster and, than 5G, Al. <laughs> well put. In looking for his fifth successful title defense. And, and Paulie, when you look now here at the beginning of round four, you've talked about Nyambayar holding his ground. Uh, what else are you noticing from the challenger that may behoove him as the fight unfolds? Well, he's got, I, I think um, his trainer, Ace Malsalas, made a good point. You know, he's got to get busier with the jab. You know, you've got to, uh, you, you risk Russell countering you with his left hand with, if you're not careful when you're busy with the jab, but you've got to oh. use that jab. Good counter combination by Russell. Because you, you want to try to disrupt Russell's positioning. You're, you're your sense of positioning is good, but you're not able to land some shots. So you know, maybe you need to disrupt Russell's sense of positioning a little bit. And one way to try to do that, at least, is by using your jab. Well, Gary Russell Jr. definitely has utilized his jab effectively as we near the midway point of the fourth frame. And we look at the uh, total punches thus far, Al. And I mentioned that Russell throws more in general than Nyambar does, and we've seen evidence of that. He's much busier. Nyambar, his right now in this fight, it's kind of boiling down to the fact that he can't keep Russell from moving to his right when he wants to and, and getting the right positioning. And the other thing is Nyambar has got to land some right hand that makes a difference in this fight. Final minute of the fourth, and of course, Gary Russell Jr., 126-pound belt holder, other champions. For now, Leo Santa Cruz, of course, recently won 130-pound title. Josh Warrington and Shakur Stevenson all laying claim to a piece of the 126-pound crown. Russell flashes the jab and then lands a left hand as Nyambayar backs away momentarily before attacking the body with a right. There's the quick right hand from Nyambayar. That, that's the kind of punch that he would normally land against opponents, but in this match, he hasn't been able to. Nyambar needs to start using some paints. You know, yeah. Something, maybe something simple like that can disrupt a little bit of the rhythm Russell's getting. Tuck, li Listen up, Tuck. The problem is you are too tight. Okay, you move, but you need to punch. I need more punch from you, baby. You understand what I mean? You need to give it more punch, man. 
Punch, uní, yo, el jab, daba el jab, hook and right. Make combination. Ok, tac. Don't give any more. That, that may be the coolest end swell I've ever seen, Paul. Yeah, I'm assuming it's, they keep it in the ice between uh, during the round so that he comes back to the corner and it cools him down. <laughs> <laughs> Just an assumption, though. Yes. It's like a giant end swell. Yes, that's what I said. It's the coolest end swell we've seen. And here we get ready for round number five. Gary Russell Jr., amateur standout with around 150 fights. He actually holds a victory over Leo Santa Cruz, someone that he has mentioned many times as one of the big fights he would like to secure. Of course, tonight, looking to stave off the challenge of Tukstan Nyambayar. Nyambayar's corner wants him to throw more punches. thing to say to throw more punches and it's another to actually you know help him cut the distance he's trying to close the gap he's doing everything right in terms of cutting the ring down keep keeping the, the right kind of pressure on Russell Shot I, I think left. I think he's gonna need to have some double jabs yes. and some feints in there to, to, to help him close the gap he's, he's, well, and Salas did mention a double jab and that would help him get inside in a little better position there he throws that the left to, to the, the body, body by Nyan Bayar And Gary Russell Jr., also an Olympian, unable to compete due to problems making weight at the 2008 Olympics. This crowd excited that that right hand almost got in, and there's one that did get there for an Ian Bear. And I, I, you know, Celis is right to talk about the double jab because it, it puts him in position. And there you look what it did. It put him in a position where he, he pretty much got a right hand. Yeah, because if you get close to and Russell. Yes, going on, and Russell again. If you, get, if you get close to Russell without putting him out of position, he's still going to have you missing. So you want to disrupt his rhythm, put him out of position with the jab. And then that way, when you follow it up with the combination, you may land some shots. If you get close and then just throw your shots, He's been smothering you, he's been slipping and sliding still, regardless. That jab is key, and I, uh, again, I'll go back to what I said before, I think feints are key as well. Russell doing a good job, though. And there was a left hook as Russell stepped to his right. We haven't seen that from Nyambiar. He hasn't stopped Russell from getting to his right. Man, incredible support for yeah, Nyambiar yeah. from this vocal Mongolian contingent in Allentown, Pennsylvania. <laughs> of all things. Who knew? See, it's that last step of getting in, and that's where Russell has the most control here. Because he well, for Gary Russell Jr., it is a family right affair. Here. His dad is in his corner. And uh, Steve Farhead has more about the father-son connections in the sport of boxing. Well, Mo, we uh, take a look at some of the more prominent father-son connections. Gary Russell Sr., you see him on the left with Gary Jr. there, trains three Russells. They're all named Gary, so it's a little confusing. One of them, Gary, that we're watching now, is already a champion. Another one was an Olympian. Uh, and there's only been one trio of brothers who, in each case, won a world title. That's the Kameda brothers of Japan. Maybe the Russells will join them. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, we saw Gary Russell. Excuse me, we saw uh, Danny Garcia with his dad. Jojo Diaz and his father won a world title last week. And now we're looking at Gary Russell Sr. with his son. How you feel? Hi. Round at number six. While Russell is trained by his father, Nyambayar trained by Ishmael Salas, the 62-year-old native of 
Cuba, the former head coach of Cuba's Guantanamo amateur team for 15 years. Oh, and Nyambiar lands a right hand. You can feel the urgency of Nyambiar. He's now, he said, now I'm going to take chances. And that's what he's trying to do. Salas trained three-time Olympic heavyweight gold medalist Felix Savone, among many others. You know, he has a good uppercut, Nyambiar, and I mentioned that at the beginning. He's in position to throw it on three or four different occasions, has not tried that punch. Russell's quick to the trigger, so if you got, you've got to time it just right. Well, you, you do, but and, and only on a couple of occasions has he been there to try it. Because if you don't you do, if you take it from too far out in the wrong spot, you'll get countered with that left hand. Russell's jab has been protecting that distance here. You know, again, he's talking about that mental pressure. Nyambar gets to a certain distance, and then that last step always betrays him. He's not able to close it, and a big reason for that is Gary Russell's jab. Nyambar is pressuring trailer. Russell. And, that and of because, course, anything Nyambayar does, whether successful or not, will get a big rise from the Mongolian But, but the reason Nyambayar was able to do that is because he used his own jab. And again, we go back to you know, what Al was saying before with, with, with Salas. Straight right hand by Nyambayar, but again, a counter combination by Russell as they exchange. And there we saw Nyambayar trying to use that left hook to the body and the head, which is an important thing for him to do. And he's, the last two rounds have been a, at least a subtle change in this fight in that Nyambayar has gotten close enough and made some things work. An amazing atmosphere here at the PPL Center in Allentown, Pennsylvania for this main event. The undefeated Nyambayar in just his 12th professional fight, looking to become a 126-pound title holder, while Gary Russell Jr. hopes to defend the title for the fifth successful time and then perhaps move on up if he can't get the big money fights at 126 but of course he needs to pass the Tukstad Nyambayar test and so far so good yeah he's, he's certainly done well in this fight even though Nyambayar has done a little bit better in his last couple of rounds and this is not an easy fight for Russell Nyambayar is, is a good fighter you're just not getting to appreciate all of it because Russell is, is also neutralizing a lot of what he does well, but Nyambar understands what he has to do, and he's, he's fighting an intelligent fight despite being behind. Right, I agree. Nyambar faints with the right. Russell pumps up the jab, doesn't connect, but again, keeping Nyambar from firing punches. Nyambar with a double pump, straight left down the middle, connects for Russell as we head to round seven. Well, there were some moments in the last round for Nyambiar that were effective. Now, lands a little bit of a straight left hand, and then he jabs his way in, and not a good counterpunch by Russell, but Nyambiar, you know, kind of cutting that distance and getting at least something in, but good counter work there by Gary Russell. And then later on in the round, Russell fainting, which, which Pauly talked about, and getting in now a lot of those punches didn't get in but that's when you you know you, you're at least he's getting in position to throw those shots yeah, and you're disrupting like russell's you position right. which gives you your best chance of not only trying to land but even if you miss you're not going to be made to pay because russell's positioning has been busted so he can't throw counter shots Midway point of this 12 round 126 pound championship fight as we begin round at number seven the champion Gary Russell Jr. in the gray fur with black trunks while the challenger the undefeated Tukstad Nyambayar is in the black with gold trunks. Mauro Ranallo, Al Bernstein, Polly Malinaggi at ringside, joined by Brian Custer, Jim Gray, Steve Farhood as we are off to a terrific starter in the seventh. mentality here by Russell. He came out high guard, looking to fight. He's given an eye on what he wants. But of course, this seems to be what Russell wants as well. Lead left to the body by Russell. And bringing in our unofficial scorer, Steve Farhood, how do you have it after half of this championship fight? Well, the first few rounds were very easy to score. They were clearly for Gary Russell. 
You know, in, in ju judging the effectiveness of that jab of Russell, he's landing a very low percentage. But when he throws it with his right arm extended, it's far less effective than when he pops it from the shoulder. I think the judges have to look at that to determine if the jab is effective enough to carry the rounds. But otherwise, I think the sixth round was very close. Could have been in the Ambrose round. Otherwise, Russell by four points. I am by arm. Moving forward, those punches are blocked by the high guard of Russell. A key moment there where he threw the left hook, Nyambiar, to try and position Russell and keep him in front of him. There's that is right something he hasn't not done in this fight enough. There, a high guard by Russell. Nyambiar getting offensive, but again throwing the one-two, bouncing it off the gloves of Russell. Now Russell marching forward with a series of lead left hands to start his combinations. Left hook to the body for Nyambayar. Good exchange here, Nyambayar, with an uptick in the offense. Well, this has been created by Russell coming forward and wanting to engage. Yeah, a bit of a change of approach here by Gary Russell. Yes, and, and he often does that in fights. And I think he's also trying to send a, send a mental, mm -hmm. mental, psychological message to Nyambayar to not get too comfortable walking him down. Mm -hmm. What do you think of uh, Russell's uh, trunks tonight? Something that may have been in your wardrobe uh, closet, no? Huh? You know, I always approve of that flashy stuff. <laughs> Good sense of fashion from Russell. Under 30 seconds left in the seventh, right hand of the body by Nyambayar. And there's a left hook to the body, but now Russell showing his speed, but good, good exchanges here. Nyambayar. Yeah, good exchanges in round seven. Very important for him to go downstairs, and he's he's doing that in this and, round. And, and that's one thing Nyambar gets an opportunity to do if Russell decides to become aggressive, as now he's kind of backed off of that. But Russell takes the chances. Yeah, I know he wants to send a mental, a psychological message there to Nyambar, but in coming forward, Nyambar can reach the body, which has been so, which has eluded him, and when he's got to come forward. Well, this is really this fighter microcosm. You know, when you're aggressive, as Nyambiar is there, he'll be effective with some body punches, but can also be countered by Russell. And Russell would come back and counter him, and not everything gets in, but that's what Gary Russell's MO is. If you land, I'm gonna counter you. And, and here's Russell again, we'll see him with the high guard and then countering uh, off that high guard. Later on, the body work of Nyambar, he's a very good body puncher and against other opponents has been able to do it. Not so much in his fight against Russell, but there he had some opportunities to do it. This is round number eight. Nyambayar's trainer, Salas, talking about the fact that they've added more flexibility to his movements. He felt he was a little too stiff and predictable before, working on his defense and counters. Nyambayar was able to throw 73 punches in that last round. That was his high in the fight, and part of that was because Russell came in and engaged him. There's a right uppercut, but then the counter right hook by Russell was a more eye-catching shot. And you know what's interesting about that? Now he tries the uppercut again. He needs to throw it, even though he got countered uh -oh. by Russell. Nyan Bayar out of range of the jab, and now mugging, and there's Russell unloading the hand speed, and things now becoming a little more interesting here in round eight. I think a little bit of frustration from Nyan Bayar. Yeah, I'm trying to show that, that ego to Russell that he's not being hurt, but he also can't reach him for the effective shots as uh, Russell throwing the impressive combination there. Nyan Bayar, four years younger than the 31-year-old Russell. Backing Russell to the ropes, or perhaps Russell trying to set a trap. of King Tug as the Mongolian contingent hoping that Nyambayar dethrones Russell and uh, Russell able to pivot away from the corner back to the center of the ring a minute and a half remaining in the eighth. Well, we 
talk about the sheer number of jabs that Russia throws, and it is extraordinary. He doesn't land a lot. He never does, but it, it's a punch that does other good for him, and the lack of jabbing by Nyambayar has been important because it hasn't let him set up his other punches. Minute left here in round eight. Talk about Nyambayar's sense of timing. You're saying, saying that it was timing was gonna be important. As Russell keeps using that jab, it's that same speed jab. You, you've got to come up with a way to time it with a counter right hand or something. With Russell, if Russell, if Russell is this confident to throw his jab, whether it's landing or not, right. it's going to control the real estate and the gap, the distance that he wants. So some good shots there, Nine Bar landed in that little sequence a second ago. Really highly skilled fight. Nobody's able to land that crisp, clean shot they want to. Even when they're throwing power shots, they're not able to land at 100% effectiveness. Both guys really fighting a disciplined fight. Straight left lands for Russell. Another left hand lands for the champion. Ten seconds left in the eighth round. High level chess here between Russell and Nyambayar as we head to round number nine. Baby. Come on, who in the corner? Who in the ring? Big up, baby. Yeah. 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 Take a look at the right hand fry, one of the best right hands that Nyambayar has thrown in this fight, and that's his power punch. But for Gary Russell, it is the right hand that does the damage for him for the most part as a power punch. And there's a straight left hand, but that's a, a straight left by Russell that gets in there. for 12 in this 126 pound title tilt the champion Gary Russell Jr. comes out firing <laughs> left hook to the body by Nyan Bayar left hook upstairs by Nyan Bayar You can see that Nyambayar is a technically oh, a sound right fighter. By Russell, so yeah, but, and there's a nice left hook. It's Russell's hand speed and overall ring generalship that is difficult for him. <laughs> and also the thing is, he's, Russell is also brilliantly technically sound. So Right, you know, exactly. They're both very technically sound right. fighters. It's just Russell has, a better, has the better hand speed. Yes. And that's what that's Russell speed. told us, his ring generalship, IQ, hand speed would all be the difference in this title defense. For a boxing purist, this is actually a, an interesting fight to watch, you know, because both guys are very technically sound boxers. Both are very well schooled, very well taught. His, I mean, Gary Russell Jr.'s father pointed out that Lambert is a B plus, uh, a B plus fighter, which is what he is. We, we just haven't seen Gary Russell in his, against A fighters. We did once, he lost to Lomachenko. Yeah, that's like an A++++ plus 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 fighter. Well, exactly, but, you know. Russell landing with the counter left upstairs, a minute and a half remaining in the ninth. And let's now let's give credit to Giorgio Diaz. I mean, Russell Yeah, he won. fought very well, and yeah, and he was a very good fighter. And Russell won a clear decision in that fight. Yes. Diaz had good moments early, but Three then punch Russell punch combination by Nyan Bayar, but it was the counter right by Russell that landed. Right to the body by Russell. Minute left to the ninth. Good body shots there by Nyan Bayar. Yeah, he's going to have to try to make it as rough as he can. Yeah, he's having a better round here in round nine. There's no question about yeah. that. And in getting this close, at this point in the fight, maybe he can finally get to the body the way he wants to. Right, and he has landed a few more down there. He's gotten a little closer in this round, and maybe it's the fatigue of Russell, mm -hmm. of, of, of Russell or, or what, or maybe Russell allowing him in. Let's see, if you're allowing him in, it means you're baiting him for something. Let's see what Russell has up his sleeve. Another left hook downstairs by Nyambayar as Russell targets the head with the one-two. 
There's another counter right by Nyan Bayar. This has been by far the most entertaining round of the fight. There's no question There's about a that. punch combination for the Mongolian. Yeah, he's having himself a good round. Mm -hmm. 15 seconds left in the ninth. Can you see the, the, this round, eh? Can you see the that? body work of Nyan If you, Bayar, if you keep touching him, he's tired. Much more he's pronounced. Scared. And he, there he goes downstairs, though he got countered by Russell in the process. But then, later on, he would be able to do the body work more effectively without being countered. And, and lands the uppercut, which, as I pointed out at the beginning of this fight, he has a very good uppercut, but just has not been able to use it effectively in this match. But there's an example of the body work that Nyamayar was able to do in that last round, by far his best round of and, the fight. And very, very um, intelligent combination there. You throw the uppercut, you bring the gloves of Russell in close, and therefore it opens up the sides for him to get to the body shot. This is round 10, and Gary Russell Jr. showcasing that hand speed, a couple of lead rights, and now Nyambayar coming back with a combination of his own to the body. Russell firing off the jab. Nyambayar able to sneak in a punch. Left uppercut by Nyambayar scores. And when Russell engages him like this, what happens is you get to see a little bit of what Nyambayar is capable of. Even if he gets countered by Russell, it makes for a very intriguing, you know, back and forth between the fighters. Yeah, Russell may be up on the fight, but Nyambayar is forcing him to work, and, and, yeah. and, it's, and, and, it, and there's pressure on Russell. utilizing deft head movement. Behind the jab, there's Nyambiar with the right hand that was watch blocked by Russell. Watch how he cuts off the ring right away. You see what I'm saying? That's what about, the, you make the physical pressure, but also the mental pressure. And he's back in his face. Good move there by Russell to get out of the danger. Lead left lands for Russell. Backing up again. The total power punches, again, everything other than a jab, as you look at them, and you see that also has, oh, here comes Nyambiar with his best combination of the fight. Those numbers notwithstanding, you see Nyambiar coming back with some, doing good work that he's done in the last round or two. Minute and a half left in the 10th. And the numbers were very close there in terms of that, and the different, one of the differences is the jab of Russell. Lead right hand for Nyambiar Ooh. scores. Left hook up, wow. down, Nyambiar scoring with these combinations. That left hook was potent. Nyambiar having himself some good rounds. He sure is. Rounds. Go on. Minute now remaining in the 10th round, and Nyambiar counting, acquitting himself well here, but Gary Russell Jr. holding his ground, firing off a left hand, left hook there blocked by Russell. But Nyan Bayar initiating the offense as Russell now tries to fire back the jab. Side to side, good head movement by Russell. So good defense from Nyan Bayar as well. Yeah. High level stuff here. Yeah, at, at close range. Both guys again keeping their positioning on the defensive end. Good counter there by Nyan Bayar. Now he's got to do more of that. He's got to in order to take away the enthusiasm from Russell of throwing that speed the way he throws it. Good shot There's another Russell. left hand that lands for Gary Russell Jr. Good stuff here in round 10 as we are headed to the championship rounds. Gary Russell's 126 pound title up for grabs here in Allentown, PA. Only me and God know you're getting tired, man. You, don't nobody gotta see this shit. No. Charlie. Only time he get close to touch you is when you pull out. Stop pulling out. When you turn out, turn out on the hook side, okay? We'll take him inside. You can...
concern in the corner by his dad, uh, as, and this is why Nyambiar coming forward. There's the uppercut. Talked about it in the keys to victory, and that was a beauty by him. And the body work, and that's where Nyambiar did his best work. But Russell also had good moments in that last round. There, the, over the lazy right hand, landing the counter punches. His dad suggesting in the corner there looked like there was a little fatigue from uh, from his son, and we'll see if there is. Yeah, I mean, I think at this point there's a bit of fatigue from both guys. Well, so sure. Championship a rounds battle. are upon us here. Round at number 11. The Mongolian fans rallying behind. Took Scott Nyambayar 11 and 0, but Gary Russell Jr. fires off the first salvo, and things heating up here in the championship rounds. Yeah, and, and Russell doing some good shots to the head, and Nyambayar doing some good work yeah. to the body. If you were in Nyambayar's corner, and I know he has one of the best in his corner, but Pauly, what would you be telling Nyambayar in these last few rounds? I think he's got to back Gary Russell up and move his hands. I mean, at this point, he's got a bit of a tired Gary Russell, so if you move your hands, you're not going to pay as much of a price with the counter shots of Russell, and you're going to be able to also target the body a bit better to keep slowing him down. And exactly he's right. doing just that. Nyambiar bringing the fight to Russell here in the 11th. Russell comes back with a counter left, and Al talk about Gary Russell Jr. and what he needs to do to, to secure this yeah, title I, victory. Yeah, I think part, he wants to keep Nyambiar off, so he's pushing forward, but his danger is he's getting hit with some body shots as well, and, you know, but if, of course, he's right near the end of this fight. If he can steal a round, uh, you know, and he's probably, he potentially is ahead already, but he's taking some vicious body punches by you know, you know what it is, yeah. you know what it is the coming forward sometimes you're trying to put up some psychological yeah. thoughts into your opponent's mind if you're walking him down he's gonna think you, you're exactly. hoping that he thinks hey i'm not slowing down that's i'm gonna walk you down precisely. you're hoping that he thinks that even if you are tired yeah that's but, exactly but you're right. trying to send that statement so that maybe he'll slow down from pressuring you Body shots landed, Nyambayar with the edge and coming into this fight, of course, many uh, ringside observers, many experts, mm. despite the fact that Nyambayar may not have been the most widely known, thought that this would be a tough test for Gary Russell Jr. Uh, how much of a test has it been? Well, now? it's turning into one a little bit here toward the oh, end of this nice fight. And there's the right Russell. hook of Russell. Now, that right hook of Russell hurts people. Uh, Nyambayar has taken it very well. level boxing on display as anticipated here two olympians the undefeated challenger a champion considered one of the elite at 126 pounds and yes people would love to see more of gary russell jr because of his dynamic talents and we are in for what promises to be a dynamic finish here with 30 seconds left in the 11th Talked about Russell getting a little, maybe a little fatigued. Nyambayar, I think, in this round toward the end, has shown a little wear and tear. Why not? There's a bit Fatigue of makes entertaining fights. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Russell in that last round using the straight left hand. He landed a lot of good power punches in that round, landing a good straight left hand. And a combination on the inside, not everything getting there, but the, and then that, that was the right hook that we talked about that punctuated that combination. You know, he's landed some very nice right hooks and has not affected the Amber. Mike Tyson could have used that against Buster Douglas, maybe. The full end squad there. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Last round, More baby. than 1,400 punches have been thrown in this fight. As we get set for the 12th and final round between the champion, Gary Russell Jr., and the undefeated number one contender, Tukstad Nyambayar. Both of them 
putting their wares on display. A definite sense of urgency from Nyambayar and Gary Russell Jr. holding his ground. No matter what the outcome, it's been kind of a different fight in the last four or five rounds where we've seen these exchanges, we've seen a, a, a better competition in a sense between these two men. Yeah, and, and again, I mean, the subtle things that you can really appreciate between these two fighters, you know? And let's let the crowd at home enjoy some of this atmosphere. And of course, as I say that, they quiet down, but it has been an electric atmosphere here at the PPL Center. with that combination. He's throwing some hellacious body shots right now. And he's, he's, he's had a lot more success in the second part of the fight. Yeah, no question. The question is, did he do it up in the first part of the fight? Right. And I'm not sure he did. That's the issue. Well, took Stott Nyambayar in his wow. 12th professional fight, acquitting himself well here against, again, <laughs> one of the elite fighters in the sport, regardless of his schedule, Gary Russell Jr. having lost just once to one of the very the best in Vasily Lomachenko. Nyambar is having himself a very good 12th round here. Some really big body shots and some shots to the head as well. So and credit to Russell too. I, you know, I mentioned the fact that Nyambar doesn't lose his positioning when Russell's oh. throwing and landing nice. shots. Steve Prince, Bob and Russell weird. doesn't really lose positioning either, even when he does get no. hit. Terrific stuff here, and Gary Russell Jr. smiling. And, They're at that and, range. And the importance of not losing your positioning is you need your opponent to feel like he's in danger of something coming back. If you lose your positioning, your opponent will know nothing can come back at him, so he's going to be more enthusiastic to throw more shots. Tiny little bit of swelling underneath the left eye of Russell. That's courtesy of some of those right hands by Nyambayar. But Nyambayar, right now, he needs to get going because he's got to do something dramatic even though he's probably won this round. Final 30 seconds of this championship fight. Earlier tonight, we saw Gary Russell Jr. defeat his younger brother in a game of chess. Is he going to defeat Tukstad Nyanbayar in what has been this high level game of boxing chess? Final 15 seconds. Gary Russell Jr. took Stott Nyambayar go the distance in a competitive contest. told us he says boxing is intellect manifested on the physical form in most cases the more educated person should win not the strongest not the biggest not the tallest the smartest well and the one that lands the most punches sometimes does as well now there's not a monstrous difference there and part of that is because in the rounds toward the end Nyambayar might have you know landed some more uh, per round but clearly they were both fairly busy and uh, the body shots landed Nyambayar did better than Russell though clearly Russell did some good work there as well the number of jabs that Russell throws is pretty extraordinary even if he lands at a lower pace and we've pointed out how that manifests itself in other good ways. Nearly 1,600 punches thrown between the two fighters. Uh, Pauly, uh, what is your review of what you've just seen? Two really, good, really good fighters. Um, you know, it's going to be a winner and a loser tonight. But uh, and, and I think Russell probably edged this fight tonight. But I'd say I'd love to see Nyan Bayer again. I think he's a threat in the featherweight division. And uh, I hope he gets uh, more shots at, at, uh, at these big fights. We'll take a look inside the ropes in a, a match that was kind of fought in two parts. The first part of the fight was where Russell was really controlling the positioning and counterpunching Nyambara very well, though occasionally right hands would sneak in, and then from time to time, Nyambara would able to work the, the body as he is now. And he did that a lot toward the end of the fight in the last four or five rounds. 
even when he did, though, clearly toward the end of that fight there, Russell was doing good work. I put the uppercuts in the keys to victory because Nambior could land them. He did land one, but he didn't land enough of those punches. And the hand speed of Russell displayed there. It was good back and forth for the last five rounds of this fight. Yeah, Nambior had to slow Russell down in order to start yeah. having some success. When Russell is at going at 100, it's, it's, uh, it's very tough to close the gap on him with great legs, great balance, and great speed. All right, we are set for the official decision here once again is Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Glenn Feldman scores about 116 to 112. John McKay sees it 117 to 111. And Judge David Bilosukerwick scores the ballot 118 to 100, all three in favor of the winner. And still, the WBC featherweight champion. Jr. successfully defends his 126 pound title for the fifth time. He improves to 31 and 1 while Tukstot Nyambayar taste defeat for the first time. But what a learning experience it will be for the talented Mongolian Olympian.